Something is bugging me. Mr. Collector. So I was thinking today, you know, I'm just going to lecture you about symbiotic relationships. You know, I'm just going to sit here and talk and blah, 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 and do like the boring routine of symbiosis and symbiotic relationships. Because I don't think you guys are even paying attention anyway. So uh, let's see. The symbiotic relationships are uh, interdependent relationships between organisms where one of the organisms uses the body of the other as its host or as its habitat. Uh, symbiotic relationships come in three different ways and in each way um, at least one of the organisms benefits from that relationship whereas the other organism may be um, also benefits or might be unharmed or may actually physically be harmed. Breaking news, breaking. We interrupt this broadcast for a very, very important special episode of the Dr. Phil Show. Coming up. Let's do it. I want you to get excited about your life. Here we go. Intense. Stand by, camera set. If you're going to talk to me, you're going to have to be honest. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Showtime. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Stand by, A. And roll A. Check in. Today on the program, we're going to talk about relationships. I got three special couples on the show today. Let's go. All right, let's go in the Dr. Phil show. I got three couples today on the show. Without further ado, we're going to talk about their relationships. All right, so these couples all are examples of symbiotic relationships. In each one of these examples, one of the members of the relationship uses the other one's body as its habitat. Let's meet couple number one. Of course, couple number one, we have the sturdy African uh, acacia tree trees that dominate the savannas, the savanna grasslands of Africa. And they have a very special relationship with ants. Why don't you tell us about your relationship? I think he's the best. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. What a cutie pie. He takes great care of me. I always treat him with the sweet, sweet products of photosynthesis. She gives ants like me that sweet nectar. We love that stuff. When large herbivores like giraffes try to eat my leaves, my little protectors attack and bite and sting them in the face. I take care of him and he takes care of me. We make a great team. She keeps me fed and I will always defend her. We work great together. Our relationship is savage. Well, thank you very much. So, uh, that first relationship, you could tell that the tree was happy. And the ants were happy. Happy, happy. That was a very happy relationship. Let's go on to couple number two. This relationship is a little different. Today we have with us the cutest button little pseudo scorpion. And they're going to tell us, she's going to tell us about her relationship with the big, burly, strong, longhorn beetle. Thanks for coming on the show. Tell us a little bit about how you feel about each other. He's such a special guy. So big and strong. Whatever. His big, strong, manly wing covers are the perfect place for me to hitch a ride to where I want to go. What a great guy. Whatever. Don't bother me none. She's so tiny, I don't even know she's there. She's like nothing to me. He's so big and strong. He gives me a ride and offers me protection. What a sweetheart. I don't care if he doesn't care. He's the best. Whatever. Interesting. That relationship was a little bit different than our first one. Pseudoscorpion, very happy. But uh, the longhorn beetle, meh. The word we use would probably indifferent. Doesn't really care. Whatever. Interesting relationship. Let's see, our third and final couple probably has the most interesting relationship of all. You can see our couple, we've got the um, red snapper, which is a fish. And they're gonna, she's going to tell us about her relationship with the tongue-eating sea louse. Tell us a little bit more about your time together. I hate him. He's made my life miserable. She's the mom, yo. She's lit. She's boots Gucci. She's got it going on. I was swimming along, minding my own business, and he ate my tongue. Hey, baby. Food is coming in your mouth. Straight fire. 
I could get me some of that. You know what I'm saying? All you do is take, take, take. You never give back. You've ruined my life. Yo, baby, it is what it is. Don't be salty. I got to get what I deserve. You know what I'm saying? Hundo P, it's all about me, me, me. Very different relationship indeed. Right? We've got this fish and then living inside of its mouth. The isopod, the tongue-eating sea louse. I think you would agree with me in this relationship. The sea louse is very, very happy. The fish? Uh, not so much. Very happy and not so much. So thank you to our three couples. If, you, if you've been paying attention, right, couple number one, both folks were happy. Couple number two, one was happy, the other was like, meh. And couple number three, one was happy, but the other one's life was being ruined. Three very different relationships, but in all the relationships, at least one happy face. Interesting. Right, so we call these relationships by their names. If names in a relationship of the acacia tree and the ants, where one was happy, the other was happy, 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 lovey dovey. That's called mutualism. Mutualism. In our second relationship, the beetle and the pseudoscorpion, the pseudoscorpion was happy, but the beetle was not happy, but not upset, just kind of indifferent, right? Happy, indifferent. Happy, not bothered at all. Happy, no effect. That's called commensalism. Commensalism. And then in our final relationship, perhaps the relationship that perhaps the most interesting, we had the, the, oh no, we had the sea louse who was very happy. She's the bomb, yo. And he had a relationship with the fish who was uh, not just unhappy, but like miserable, like misery, right? That's called parasit parasitism. I got my finger in the way. Parasitism, parasitism. We call the sea louse a parasite. And in a weird kind of twist, we call the fish a host. And I think that's weird because Hosts usually invite their guests over. I don't think that fish would invite that sea louse. Now, if you've been paying attention in the golf fly lab, we've had parasites. The golf fly is a parasite, right? The goldenrod, it's good for the golf fly. But we never think about the goldenrod. It's not good to have a golf fly living in your stem, right? It's stealing from you. <laughs> that jerk makes my life miserable. <laughs> I just love it here in this gall. It's so nice and cozy. Plus, I get all the food I could ever want to eat. Woohoo! The gall, the goldenrods are not happy. Thanks for watching this week's uh, episode of the Dr. Phil Show. Up next on this network, the curse of the zombie snails. Uh...